I really want to convince you of the fact that mathematics is everywhere. And I'm going to start very easily. Uh, as you can see behind me on the screen, this is me. All right? All expressed in numbers, except my name, but you could change that by numbers uh, as well if you uh, want to. That's a description of me, so just using numbers. And do not bother to, uh, to write down my uh, bank account number. It's fake. Okay? And if there are mathematicians in the audience, and I would assume so, yes, the body mass index is wrong. Because you have my weight, and that's correct. You have my length, and that's correct. And if you do the calculation, it's wrong. Okay, that's only to show that it's not because it's numbers that it is correct. Okay, uh, numbers are very difficult uh, things. Okay, you open a newspaper, you open a uh, journal, whatever, what do you get? Pie charts, uh, statistics, etc. Numbers, numbers everywhere. You go to my university. If you ask my university, how are we supposed to describe Jean Paul? Well, this is how, how uh, they do it. That's me. That's my scientific research profile. <laughs> I'm not going to explain the numbers. I mean, you are not interested, I know. Uh, and if you are deeply impressed by, oh, wow, 226 papers? Well, see the third line. It says 39 years. I mean, uh, okay, I've taken my time. Okay, so that's numbers, okay? But it would be absolutely wrong to uh, limit mathematics to only numbers. Uh, the famous uh, philosopher Alfred North Whitehead tried to convince us that uh, mathematics is about the science of patterns. Structures, and that's really what I want to uh, talk about. And first of all, I would like to, well, take you through this argument. Well, I've ju just called it a few simple observations. Namely, okay, in the world, patterns occur. Everybody will agree with that. I mean, the world somehow is structured, right? Second, human beings have the capacity to recognize these patterns. And I will come back to that uh, in a second. That's mostly what we call science uh, in, 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 in plenty of cases. Three, human beings have expectations. Of course, I mean, you are looking forward to the reception that will follow immediately after me. Uh, so you have an expectation. You have the expectation that he won't be talking too long, that it will not be too complicated. It will become complicated. Sorry about that. But, okay, that's the expectation you have. Right. Four, human beings are overall not geniuses. I think you can agree on that, okay? To avoid all misunderstanding, I've slightly reformulated that sentence logically correct. It means that it is not the case that everyone is a genius. Okay? I mean, I try to be as correct as possible. So that means that the human beings make mistakes. They make a lot of mistakes, and they do it in a highly systematical fashion. That's the beauty of it. So, if you now combine these things, you have a few simple consequences. Namely, it will happen, and actually they all happen that sometimes we find patterns that we expected to find. That's good. Sometimes we find patterns that are there but, and that we did not expect. I will mainly focus on that because that's uh, the greatest fun uh, there is in uh, mathematics. But also the inverse. Sometimes we expect patterns to be there, but they are not there. There are no patterns at all. And most importantly, there are also cases where we fail to find patterns, and that is what we expect. And I will show you an example at the end, a very dramatic uh, example. Now, what I'm going to do, quite simply, I'm going, uh, going through the four possibilities. Some will be very short, some will be slightly longer. And if all goes well, during my presentation, a miracle will occur. I can assure you, a true miracle. Okay, so, there are patterns, and we expect to find these patterns. That's really what science is all about. And it goes from the extremely large, I mean, this beautiful picture of the visible universe being put in a single picture. And it goes the other way around to the tiniest parts that compose this universe. You see this? <laughs> this is one single equation describing behavior of elementary particles. Isn't that great? And you must have noticed that on the 13th line, I think, there's a plus that should be a minus. But uh, that, uh, that's no problem. That's, for, uh, that's what science is about. It also goes for us humans. I mean, it's not merely nature uh, that we can uh, study and search for patterns, etc. We can do it for humans as well. Isn't this a beautiful uh, diagram showing that it took us one century to get the 100-meter sprint record one second down? Isn't that beautiful? And if you look at the black line at the end, you see it, all of a sudden it makes this gi gigantic drop. Well, that's uh, Usain Bolt, okay? 
fine. Now, here we go. This is the patterns that are there and that we do not expect. And I have three examples. So one that, okay, when I come to that example, I'll, I'll uh, explain it very, very, very briefly. Now, if I would ask you this question, what is the probability that here and now, for a selected group of people, of course not to the whole audience, that would, that would be silly, but for a selected group of people, that there are at least two people born on the same day and month, not year, day and month. We tend to uh, underestimate that probability. We will say, well, say if you have uh, 50 people. We say, wow, that sounds unlikely, but it doesn't. You see, you see the figures there? If you have 23 people, the chances are one on two, 50%. If you have 40 people, it's 95%. If you're 50 or over, you are at 99% or more. Now, as I'm scientifically inclined, as it is so beautifully called, some of you uh, have been asked to give their uh, birth date, uh, day and month. I guess most of you are still present here. Uh, in all, uh, I've asked the organizers, could you ask about 50 people? There were 52 people. Uh, they've asked, can we have your uh, uh, date of birth? And I have the list here with me. Right, okay, that's uh, scientific evidence. Um, it turns out that there, are, that there is one couple that was born on the uh, 20th of January. Now, can I just ask, are these two people still here? And are there other people born on the 20th of January? Okay, nice. There's a second couple that was born on the 22nd of March. They are still here? Okay, and are there other people born on the 22nd of March? Okay, fine, we have two couples. You see? It's really amazing. It, it, it's an astonishing uh, effect that if you have 23 people, the chances are one on two. And actually, the argument why that is, is rather simple. No, 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 these are just numbers. And now, in the meantime, you know what numbers are. So uh, uh, that, that's, that, that's not an argument not to look at uh, the, these figures. One of the things that uh, plays in the, the, this problem is that when you ask somebody, what do you think is the probability that and so forth, most people think that, uh, wow, I'm born on, this, on, on, uh, on the 28th of March, somebody else being born on the 28th of March? Well, you're right. If that would have been the question, that is unlikely. But the question is actually a different one. What you are asking is, okay, what is the probability that there are two persons that are born either on the 1st of January, the 2nd of January, the 3rd of January, up to the 31st of December? And that's a quite different question. And you can show it by looking at the negative question. Namely, what is required to have all the birth dates different? Well, you have a multiplication there. Look at the first factor. That simply says, okay, if you take the first person, that person must have a date. Well, let's hope uh, that, it is that, it, that is the case. Normally, it should be so. So that is why it's uh, 365 on 365. That's one, okay? For the next person, all dates are possible except the first one. So it's 364. For the next person, it's 363 because you have to exclude the, the two previous dates. And you go down to 343 because that is... Uh, the 23rd person in that case, you do the calculation, and what do you get? 0 0.5. So it's one on two. It's as simple as that. But it's very astonishing. Okay, the next problem I had was about rabbits. Uh, Fibonacci's rabbits. But, okay, in the end I thought, well, we all know about Fibonacci, uh, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so forth. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that. Nevertheless, there is something funny with the rabbits. Uh, <laughs> okay. I don't have time to explain this, but I'm, go I'm going to try to do it uh, as quickly as possible, okay? So uh, this part of uh, my talk, ignore it, okay? Uh, it's just, I want to explain it to you, but it's not important enough, to be honest. Okay, now, okay. The N you see, you have K and the N re refers to months. So uh, first month, second month, and so forth. Okay, you have rabbit. To be precise, you have rabbit pairs. So a couple consisting of a male and a female. Now what happens? Uh, when a rabbit uh, pair is born, it's uh, not yet fertile. It takes one month to become fertile. Once they are fertile, each rabbit pair produces a new pair. Just one pair. Again, male, female. And now you ask the question, okay, after a number of months, how many pairs are there? And the answer is there on top. It says Kn is Kn minus 1 plus Kn minus 2. Why? Because the number of rabbits pair, uh, rabbits pair, sorry, that's here, uh, in a particular month is equal to all the rabbits uh, before, 
I've forgotten to, sell that, uh, to tell you that the rabbits don't die in this case. It's uh, mathematics. <laughs> uh, so all the rabbits from, from the month before, plus an additional number of rabbits, namely those produced by the fertile ones, and those are equal to the month before that. Right, but that's not important. Forget it. What is important is the next thing. You see the growth rate. That is to say, now you look at the number of pairs in a particular month compared to the previous month. So how fast does the population grow? Now, the growth rate, where does it tend to? The answer is, and you can prove it mathematically, the answer is the golden ratio. There's a golden ratio within the reproductive behavior of rabbits. Now, that is what I call perfection. You don't expect the golden ratio. You expect it in paintings, in buildings, etc. And there are, no problem there, but also with rabbits. Okay, but that's, that's not what I wanted to talk about. Uh, here is the, the funny thing. This is really uh, top-notch mat uh, mathematics. And a very important issue, by the way, uh, in present day, uh, not only mathematics, but uh, applied mathematics, so-called big data that you must have uh, heard of. This is one of the phenomena that they have to deal with, namely patterns that you cannot avoid. So you, you, you're not really expecting these patterns, but you cannot avoid them. They are there. It's a very simple example. Okay? You have uh, six persons, and you imagine a very simple relationship. Namely, a person knows another person, and the relation is symmetrical. So if uh, one knows two, two knows one. You can take any other relation. The point is, you must have a relation that either applies or it does not apply. So either they know one another, or they do not know one another. Well, if you have six persons, sorry, six persons, I'm a mathematician, I cannot count, okay? I reason, but I do not count. Uh, if you have six persons, there will always be three persons that mutually either know one another or do not know one another. You cannot avoid that. And this sounds strange. Now, I'm going to do an experiment now. Okay, here. We start with person one on top, because we are looking from the position of person one. On the bottom, you have person two, three, four, five, six. The full lines represent knowing. So that means P1 knows P2, and inversely, knows P3, knows P4. He does not know, those are the dotted lines, he does not know 5 and 6. First thing, you see, I have now done it with uh, full lines and dotted lines, but no matter how you distribute the full and dotted lines from the perspective of P1, either you will have three full lines at least, or three dotted lines at least. You cannot avoid that. Okay, so in this case, let us look at what happens with P1 together with P2, P3, and P4. Suppose that P2 and P3 know one another. No good. Because now these three know one another mutually. If you want to avoid that, that's no good. So, it must be the case that P2 does not know P3. But with the same argument, P3 cannot know P4 and P2 cannot know P4. Because if that would be the case, you would again have a triangle. But now you see at the bottom, there you have your three people that mutually do not know one another. Right. Now, if some of you now say, well, yeah, sure, that's almost trivial what you are saying there. <laughs> well, in that case, be happy. You have now understood a mathematical proof. So, <laughs> If back in your days of secondary school, you say maths is the most horrible thing a person can imagine, uh, today you have now understood a fine mathematical proof. Wow. Okay, let's go briefly now. Uh, patterns that you expect and are not there. Okay, haha, <laughs> the famous face on Mars. 76, Viking 1 makes photos of Mars and all of a sudden, there's a face. And many, 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 many people expect it. <gasps> this shows that there must have been an extraterrestrial intelligence there that have created that. You wait 25 years, then they send uh, the uh, Mars Global Surveyor. Uh, the photos have a slightly higher resolution, and you get this. And there goes the face on Mars. <laughs> it's not there at all. Okay, right. We did have to wait 25 years. Okay, sometimes you have to be patient. I could now talk to you uh, hours and hours, I'm not going to do it, really, uh, about this whole area where people expect certain patterns and they are not there. I could entertain you for hours on astrology. Actually, I can draw a horoscope, so if after this, uh, when this is finished and you want to know your future, 
Uh, I will be at the reception, just contact me. Um, okay. But if you talk about, well, I, I, I'm not going to go. Well, yes, okay. Uh, <laughs> dreams coming true. I mean, <laughs> of course some dreams come true. I mean, <laughs> that would be a very odd thing. Look at it uh, statistically. The number of dreams you have in, say, Flanders during one night, it would be odd if not some of them come true. By the way, uh, uh, it's very exceptional, it's a, a curious fact, but some dreams refuse to become true. I mean, it never happened to me, as somebody who is uh, a, a commuter between Ghent and Brussels, to be in the morning uh, on the platform in the train station, and somebody standing next to me who's either in uh, his or her underwear or naked, and telling me, man, you won't believe what dream I had last night. Uh, <laughs> never happens. Uh, <laughs> Yes, uh, okay, I, I'll skip the lottery behavior, but the uh, seeing likenesses between ch uh, children and parents, they have done the experiment. So for all future parents here in uh, this room, when that moment arrives, when the baby is there, and you're so happy, and you're in your uh, room in the hospital, and then all the family, and all the relatives, and all the friends come to visit you, and then they start to look at the baby, and then they look at you, and then they say, oh, just a copy of his father. Well, this has been uh, investigated. <laughs> we do not do better than chance. So if you want to get rid of your family and your relatives, simply ask the person next to you when there is a visit, can I just borrow your baby for uh, one hour? Um, <laughs> right. I'm closing off, I'm closing off. I, I mean, they are extremely generous here behind me. Uh, the last one, <laughs> no parents and no expectations, of course. I mean, th that's usually forgotten, but I would never have entered this stage if this wooden floor could all of a sudden change into, I don't know, a bathtub. Or imagine that there would be a connection between my movements, and you have seen that I make plenty of movements, between my movements and the stability of the roof <laughs> in this hole. Uh, <laughs> you would be fleeing out. <laughs> Notice, this does not exclude that things can run in parallel. I mean, there's a very nice correlation, a strict correlation between my age and the age of the universe. Isn't that amazing? Well, no, it's not amazing. We're just both growing old, that's all, okay? Uh, <laughs> And then to finish off, uh, I have now talked just, in a sense, yes, I have just talked about patterns that are there to be found or mistakenly found, etc. The sequel to this presentation should be a presentation on patterns, not that they are there, but that we can imagine. And I'm letting you look at this beautiful, impossible picture, but there you have it. That's human imagination really has no boundaries. Thank you very much. Thank you.